Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Chris Wicks. I'm going to go ahead and do a different type of video today. Usually I'm doing juice reviews. Today I'm just going to do a table side view of wrapping a coil on my single coil. When your canthal gets a bit built up and you can no longer clean it or you just want to go with a different wrap or lower ohms or higher ohms even, or it just makes it easier to go ahead and show you how to do it so you could do it later. Now I'm going to do it on just this um, Igo L, I believe it is, um, or a clone of some sort. I'm going to put it on my K100 here. I'm using 29 gauge canthal wire, and this wire is from uh, vapowire.com. And I'm also using a ohm meter, which is pretty important when you're wrapping your coils. You want to stay within the limit of your battery. There's charts online how to do that. Today, I'm just going to show you how I wrap my coils. I don't have the be all end all of how it's done, but um, I'm going to wrap it around this. This is just a. Uh, screwdriver just a general screwdriver it's a t6 it's called um, it's got that hex at the end that you can take the uh, MVPs apart with usually now I'm gonna wrap it around there I think it's 1 8 or 1 quarter I don't know to be honest with you um, I have some coils already made I'm just gonna make another one and show you how I do it all right so let's go ahead and get started I already have my wire pre-cut. When you're cutting wire from a spool, it's going to want to unwind and you'll spend a lot of time wrapping it back up. So make sure you go ahead and as soon as you cut it, poke it back through the secure hole. I have about eight, nine inches here cut. Um, what you're going to want to do is just, I uh, don't know sure if you can see this here, but uh, I'm going to take the wire and I'm just going to do it this way. Um, you got the point of the wire up and I will just put it on my thumb right there and wrap it. Oopsie, it's already trying to slip out. So about an inch in, I'll wrap it once, twice, three times. So you start with one over and then you're gonna have one under. Depending on your setup, you're gonna wanna either push it real close together. So this part is top, one, two, three, I'm gonna go four, five, scoot it down, make it tight, six. Now it just depends how many uh, ohms you want, but I usually stay between six and nine wraps. It usually puts me at about a 1.0 to a 1.83. I would consider this to be one, two, three, four, five, six, about six wraps. Now this one's coming under, and this one's coming over. You can cut the canthal with scissors, although what I've found works best is a nail clipper. So you got about a half inch to an inch on either side poking out. And now with this, there's no poke it through the hole and tighten it down scenario. This is a go around the screw head. And I'll pull this out. So now I have my coils. Okay. I'll squish them together a little bit. And once you heat them up, uh, I can squish them together a lot of it. So I'm going to want to estimate of where it's going to sit at. It'll probably sit at like right, like right there. So I'll put it on either side of the screws or just one and hold it there. And get my screwdriver and just screw it down. It's just to hold it in place. It's not where it's going to end up, but that's kind of where I want it to be about that far away from the screw head. This one goes on the outside going in. The other one goes on the outside as well. And it's not an exact science. Everybody does it a little differently. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and curl that around, turn it upside down and let gravity hold it into place and then screw it down. So the canthal is between the screw and the metal and it should hold just fine like that. I'll wrap it around and push it down and you might have to cut off the excess. It's going to take some time and the more you do it the easier it gets. So that one is wrapped around and you can see my coil is 
like this. Well, you can move your coil around just by putting the screwdriver back in or whatever you use to wrap it. Okay. So on the outside going in, I have that one. And on the outside going in, I have this one. Now, it gets a little tricky, and it might be helpful if you just leave that screwdriver in like that. Because it forces things to go where you want it to. Alright, so, I got it pre-looped. Just going to go ahead and tuck that in. And I'm sorry if all you're seeing is my fingers, but uh, it's a different kind of video for me. So, you might have to use two. I'm just going to hold that into place. And it gets frustrating when you wrap in coils. It really does. Um, just take your time. And the more dexterity you get, the easier it gets. If you're dealing with small wires, you may or may not be used to it. succeed keep trying a lot of people use magnifying glasses or an eye loop um, tweezers definitely work now I don't have them with me so it makes it a little, a little harder invest in some tweezers It'll make your life that much easier all right so I think I got it it looks like it's on there now I'm going to go ahead and do this. I usually don't do this, but I'm going to cut off the excess cantle wire on that one. So now I have a coil. It's horizontal. You can make them vertical, whatever's easier for you. At this point, I'm going to stick it on my own meter. Screw it in like you would on any device. I'm going to turn it on. Looks like it's coming out to 2.8 ohms. So this is a little heavy. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, so I, I did wrap the coils probably a couple, two times too many, or it needs to be put together. And as you push it together and change the distance of your wire, it's gonna change a little bit, okay? So the more you fuddle with your coil, you're gonna change your ohms. So, you know, find a spot that works for you Push it together nice and good like that until you're happy with it. Make sure it doesn't touch the posts and only the wire from the hot and the cold and the negative to positive, whatever you want to call it. All right, so I'm sitting at 1.98 with that one, and I'm okay with that because um, I'm not a sub ohmer. Um, I like to stay safe with my batteries. 1.8 is going to work just fine, and if not, I'll take it apart and redo it, you know. Um, you could try out how many different coils you do, and you'll you'll get used to it. So, I'm going to go ahead and just heat it up. It's taken a while to heat up, because it's uh, close to 2 ohms. So, you see how it, it's, like, uh, heated up right now? See, when I touch it, it brightens. I'm just going to squish it together. And what you're doing is conditioning the coil. You want it to burn evenly. If you can see how the top part heats up more than the bottom part. So you kind of want to make sure that everything heats up evenly. You just got to play around with the coils. Now usually tweezers work best, but I don't have any. So, uh, so that's how that's going to go. Alright, so that's pretty much heated. It's pretty much ready to go. The ohms are, what, 2 ohms? I'm going to go ahead and check it again after I fired it. And you could do this as many times as you want. And you don't want to touch those uh, those coils because they'll be really hot. Alright, so I'm standing at uh, 1.98 1.98 ohms. So just shy under 2 ohms, which is fine. As long as you're over 1 ohm, you should be a-okay. Now's a good chance to go in there and clean it out with a Q-tip. You'll notice, see, there's some gunk on there. You're definitely going to have maintenance with your devices, so don't forget to clean the contacts 
and uh, clean your contacts on this too as well. If you'll notice, I don't know if you can see it, but it is turning black in some areas. So it's good to get out some of the gunk that you can get down in there. And you'll just screw this back on just like this. Now normally, you're good to go. You put it up here, you put on the, the screw. Make sure, if you're doing your coils, in fact, I'm going to do it the proper way. I'm going to go ahead and put this back on my own reader and use this as like a station, okay? Um, what I'll do is I'll get some, some cotton and I'll unravel it. And uh, I'll just unravel it and pull out a good chunk. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. The key is uh, to just wrap it up. Now I'm going to cut off the twisted part. But you want to make it so it's going to fit through there. Okay, so just cut off that hair. Hopefully I did that where you could see it. And I'll just feed it through. Twist it and feed it through to make sure it fits and doesn't move my coils. And sure, you can use gloves if oils are getting on it. But if you pull it past the part, see how it's got a little play? That's kind of good. Oh, what I'll do is cut it off right about there. And cut it off right about there. Sometimes good scissors are really important to use. I use the smaller scissors. There we go. And if it's uh, pulling out, just pull it back a little bit. So now you have it sitting out. Now everybody does their coils a little different, but I just like to trim the excess to where it's just kind of fluffy and sitting there. And what I do is I tuck the sides down and tuck the sides down so if juice gets in the well, the bottom of the cotton can touch it and it still has good airflow around the coil because the coil needs the air to heat up your juice. Okay, so now that I have the cotton there, I'm just going to go ahead and fill it up. Um, just going to go ahead and fill it up. Let's see, what do I want to put in there? That's the next question, right? We'll see what I want to put in there. Not sure. Let me check your ohms again. See, it does change a little bit. When you're touching and fiddling, a uh, little voltage drops. It's just about two ohms. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put some of this on there. And just saturate that cotton. You don't want that cotton to be dry when you're vaping. And um, if you mess up, just start over. You know, it's no big deal. Wrap, uh, wrap some more canthal. Order your canthal by the spool. If you order it in small bits, you're going to want to be too gingerly with it and not waste it. And sometimes wrapping a good coil, you need to have a little bit of leftovers. I still have some leftovers there. It's not a problem when you have a spool. Well, that's pretty much how I wrap my coils. You take the hole on your lid and match it up. Push it down and it's ready to go. So you got your canthal, you got your own meter, you have something to wrap it with, you got Q-tips to work at it. I'd say it works out pretty good. Um, just put it back on your device, pull the cap off, make sure it's firing. So it's coming out a little light. Okay, it is a 2 ohmer, so I might redo it, but... I'm going to pick up the coil just a little bit and pull it off away from the ground. Let's see how that works out. There we go. So you're, sometimes you have to fiddle with it to where it's not so low in the well. You want to bring it on up. Just get a, something underneath it. Now it's going to be hot, so don't use your fingers, right? And then just pull it up. You'll find where you like it to be. Right there is good for me. Uh, this is Chris Wicks. Just a quick different video of how to wrap your coils. I hope it worked out for you.
nice flavor it's not so warm it's good and decent anywhere between 1 and 2.0 ohms if you're new to wrapping coils I would stay between that for a different flavor um, if you want to chase clouds you don't really need to go low ohms to do so it's just how you wrap your coils this is Chris Wicks Thanks so much for watching, and uh, check out some of my juice reviews later. Be safe, and uh, rock on.